Hi guys, it's James here and welcome to my latest video, the Panzer 1 in 116 by Tacon. Before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to Yo Ben for becoming my first patron. And if you're interested in helping out and making a pledge, just head over to patreon.com forward slash LPJ models. Anyway, let's get on with the rest of the build. Before we get stuck into the building, let's take a look at the instruction book and the parts. The instruction book spans 13 pages and is easy to follow. There are markings for four paint schemes in the kit, two for Poland 1939, one for France 1940 and one for Libya 1941. The hull tub comes moulded in one piece and it's quite nicely done. You can see on the turret some of the nicely recessed screw detail. The moulding is generally crisp as you'd hope for this scale and flash free. There are however some nasty ejector pin marks which will need to be dealt with later. The anti-slip texture on the fenders is really nice and there are also some weld details. The tracks come supplied as individual links which you've got to cut and clean up yourself. They also come with pins which is a nice addition. And that means with careful construction they should be workable at the end. You get a piece of copper wire for the tow cable and a small sheet of photo etch. I would have expected some more photo etch for a kit this size. The transparent parts are nicely moulded and they're blemish free. I've only built two Tacon kits and the decals always seem to be a bit of a problem. I'll take care with these later on. Right, let's get on with the build. I firstly pre-assembled the right hand side of the suspension. This was just to get a feeler for the kit before I committed to film. Ok so here comes a lazy modeler's trick. If I have any seam lines that are particularly tricky to clean up, I use Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and try and melt them away. This can be great for rounded parts as you don't end up sanding them out of shape. Just be careful not to go too glue happy. I think the spring detail here could have been a little bit better, like maybe they could actually supply a real spring. Anyway, I wasn't going to scratch build one because, uh, I'm not very good at it. The house for the idler wheels were flooded with extra thin, making sure to squeeze out some of the plastic ooze to make the cleanup a lot easier. These were just dry fitted for now, to make painting easier later on. The ejector pin marks on the road wheels were filled with AK white putty. This part was wheelie fun. When the filling work was done, I laboriously trimmed and filed it away to a smooth surface. The suspension units were relatively easy to construct. Just take care when dealing with the seams when you've glued them together. When assembling the main suspension unit, make sure not to get any glue on the central spar. You want this glue free if you want the suspension to remain workable. See, no glue on the spar and full articulation. How cool is that? 
drive wheel and first road wheel were just dry fitted into place, whilst the rest of the suspension arms were fitted to the hull. One of the downsides to the suspension assembly were the teeny tiny clips you used to clip them on. This was a bit of a lazy solution by Tacom. Because of some over-enthusiastic sanding, I was left with a bit of a gap. It was also missing a prominent weld seam that was seen on the actual vehicle. This was filled with AK white putty. It was then cleaned up with a damp cotton bud. Armed with some top secret modeling technology, a tea light, I stretched some sprue in preparation for making the weld beads. The sprue was glued in place with Tamiya extra thin cement. When it was dry, I recoated the sprue in Tamiya extra thin to soften it. This was then attacked with a sharp 10A scalpel blade, softened again and attacked again, then softened again and attacked again, then softened again and attacked again until I was finally happy with the result. It's important to slice the sprue at the same angle each time to make the weld beads look consistent. Panzer 1s were often seen without their front mud guards. To achieve this, I had to saw away the mountain lugs for the mud guards. This was done with my trusty CMK razor saw. There were some prominent ejector pin marks on the underside of the fender. These would be seen when the model's finished, so I needed to tidy them up. Mounting the fenders to the hull was a tight squeeze. I needed to remove some plastic on the hull tub to get it to fit correctly. The upper hull comes as a multi-part assembly and surprisingly, the parts fit quite nicely. I did need some small amounts of putty in the end, but with this type of assembly, that was to be expected. When gluing the upper superstructure to the hull, make sure it's clamped or taped tightly. Mine shifted a bit whilst it was drying. The hinges and hatches on the engine deck came moulded separately. 
Whilst this is nice, it's a bit defunct without an engine being in there. All the vision ports came with their opening mechanisms. I left these off as you weren't going to see them with the turret closed. With the turret in place, it's starting to look like an actual tank. The clasps for the mudguards were quite delicate. I also needed to modify them to show some in the open position. I did lose a few to battle damage later on. The MGs were just push fitted at the moment. This was to make painting them easier. I did the same with the exhaust. Not a drop of glue in sight. I added some chain to the toe pintle with green stuff weld, extra fine brass chain. The same was also done on the smoke grenade launchers. The tracks were really easy to assemble. Only occasionally did I need to drill out some holes with a 0.5 drill bit. Just make sure everything's completely lined up before you put the track pin in. I did break a few. After a relatively painless construction, the final track pin was popped in place, completing the assembly, leaving me with a fully workable set of Panzer I tracks. I tested popping the tracks onto the model to make sure they fit correctly. Luckily they did, and with a little bit of wiggling they were on. Ok with the building done, let's get on to some paintwork. Unfortunately I would run out of Mission Models Grey Primer, so I had to use some Badger Steinal... Styron Res... Steinal Res? Steinal Res. I had had the bottle lying around for a little while and hadn't got round to using it yet. It's actually not that bad. This was sprayed unthinned at 20 psi through my 0.2 Hardering Steamback Infinity. On this build we're going to do some hairspray chipping, so I started the paint job with an undercoat of Mission Models German Red Oxide Primer mixed with black. This was mixed one part black to one part whole red. When thinning Mission Models paint I usually use 10 drops of paint, 3 drops of poly and 2 drops of thinner, and my usual spraying pressure is 20 to 25 psi. 
added some highlights to the chipping coat, with some more red added to the previous mix. This was sprayed similarly to how I was going to do the modulation later on. When the chipping coat had dried, I protected it with a few light coats of Misha Models Semi Gloss Clear. I haven't had much success with the model specific chipping fluids, so I went hairspray shopping and this was the closest I could find to what Michael Rinaldi uses in the UK. I don't think the mist is quite as fine as the US or Canadian versions, but let's see how we get on. The hairspray was dusted over the entire model until it had a uniform satin sheen. Once the hairspray had dried, it was time to move on to the main paintwork. The initial colours I used were Mission Models Panzer Grey mixed with black. This will help establish a shadow coat for any highlights later on. Next up, I sprayed on some pure Panzer Grey. This was the start of the highlighting process. Here I'm trying to keep my layers thin to make the hairspray chipping easier later. Next up, I added some white to the Panzer Grey. This was used to reinforce the highlights and push the contrast. I used tape here to get nice crisp edges and a solid demarcation between the shading and the highlights. I did the modulation the other way on the transmission access hatch to add some visual interest. This was carefully freehanded as I didn't want to mask the little curves. I added even more white to my previous paint mix. This was used on the extremities of the model, like the top of the turret and the vision ports. At the time of making this video, Mission Models hadn't released a Dunkel Brown yet, so I had to mix my own. I used Mission Models Rail Tie Brown, Rot Brown and a touch of black. This was again freehanded at around 20 psi. I didn't spray so close to the model this time, as I wanted a nice feathered edge to the camouflage. I had to be careful with the amount of paint I was putting down. I didn't want the paint to be too thick because the chips would look silly. 
One of the problems I was going to face with the build was the modulated base coat and the unmodulated camouflage. To combat this, I used a mix of Mission Models Rock Brown, Rail Tie Brown and more black to add some shadows to the model. I had to be really careful to colour inside the lines here, but I think in the end the effect worked. With the camouflage done, it was time to do some chipping. I used some tepid water mixed with three drops of Mission Models Thinner. This was then worked into the paint job to reactivate the hairspray underneath. Once enough moisture had got into the finish, the paint started to lift. You don't want to soak your model, you just want to get the surface slightly wet, otherwise you'll lift up too much paint. I have a few tools in my arsenal for chipping the paint. The synthetic paintbrush works great for minor surface wear. The interdental brush has a bit more attack to it, and you can also use the end for scratches. And finally, the sharpened toothpick is great for precision removal of paint. One nice accidental effect that I got when doing the hairspray chipping was some of the brown camouflage wore off. This really helped add to the worn look of the tank. I tried not to go too overboard with the chipping. I really tried to keep the chips small and placed logically. So the main areas I chipped were the engine deck, the hatches, anywhere the crew might be able to get to. On areas like the lower hull and the superstructure sides, I added more scratches than chips. This was to try and give the weathering a more natural appearance. To prepare the model for decals and to protect the chipping layer underneath, I sprayed a few coats of Mission Models Gloss Clear. I used Mr Hobby Mr Mark Setanio to prepare the decals for placement. Surprisingly, the thick tack on decals settled nicely. Once the decals were on and settled down, I sprayed the whole model with a coat of Winsor & Newton Artist Acrylic Matte Varnish. I was going to be detail painting next, and I don't like painting on a gloss surface. So while this layer might be a bit superfluous, it makes me happy. Often on Panzer 1s, the protective mount for the aerial was made out of wood, 
I used Tamiya Desert Yellow XF59 and a 2-0 Kalinsky Sable brush and added some small chips to make it look like the wood was showing through the layers of paint. I know Tamiya doesn't brush well, but it's what I had to hand at the time. For the metal tools, I used a mix of Mission Models Black and Mission Models Rot Brown. And for some reason, also, probably the worst brush I own. Using photos of actual tools for reference, I stippled on some worn black grey tyres, wet on wet. This was blended in to give a soft mottle to the colour. Photos of German tools show they've got a grey haze to the black patina. This I've tried to replicate here. I next stippled on some Mission Models Burnt Iron 1 whilst the paint was still wet. This was to give the effect of corroded, worn metal. I then used Mission Models Burnt Iron 1 again and reinforced some highlights on the edges of the tools. And lastly, I used Mission Model Silver to show some fresh, worn metal areas. And for a very final finishing touch, I washed over a thin glaze of Vallejo Bright Orange. This gives the impression of some light surface rust buildup. Sadly, Tacom didn't include stencil decals for the fire extinguisher. You can buy some online, but I decided to paint them myself. The Tetra lettering took a few goes, but I got a result I was happy with in the end. I used a ProArt Designer 2.0 Kalinsky Sable. This brush has slightly longer bristles, allowing you to hold more paint. The smaller block of text was a black square surrounded by an orange outline. To avoid having to paint a tiny line, I painted the orange first and then infilled the black afterwards. The smaller portions of text were just hinted at with some dots and dashes. For the wooden handles of the tools, I started with a coat of Mission Models Elfenbein. This was built up in a few light coats. I protected the underlying paint from any solvents with a coat of Mission Models Gloss Clear. For the wood grain on the tools, I used a mix of Artist Oils, Burnt Umber and Yellow Ochre. This was thinned with AK Odorless Thinners. You don't have to go for a solid coat of paint here, just getting the paint on the right parts is fine. When the thinner had evaporated, I used a stiff tatty brush to drag the oil paint in the direction I wanted the grain to go. If you add a slight wiggle when you're dragging the brush along, this can give some natural variation to the wood grain. If you get any oil paint where you don't want it, you can remove it with white spirit or odorless thinners. The Pioneer wire cutters had bakelite handles and the poles were made out of crushed paper. <laughs> 
I painted the handles with Vallejo whole red. The poles were base coated with a coat of Vallejo US Field Drab mixed with white. I then stippled on a mix of US Field Drab and bright orange to emulate the crushed paper texture. I'm really pleased with how this came out, it looks really authentic. The exhaust pipes and mufflers were painted with a mix of Mischer Models German Oxide Red Primer and Grün Brown. This will make a nice base coat for some rusty effects. Using a piece of sponge, I stippled on Mischer Models Burnt Iron 1 to the exhaust pipe. This was followed by some generous stippling of various rust colours over the whole exhaust assembly. This didn't have to be neat as it was getting covered by more layers. I protected the paintwork with a coat of Mischer Models Gloss Clear. The rusty areas were then covered with a few light coats of hairspray. Mission Models Panzer Grey was then sprayed over the exhaust pipes. The hairspray was then activated with water and Mission Models Thinner and then chipped away to reveal the rust underneath. The photo etch exhaust protectors were annealed and then rolled with a piece of plastic tube to the right shape. These were then primed and painted Mischer Models Burnt Iron 1 for more chipping. After a coat of hairspray, it was time for some more Panzer Grey. This was then chipped and worn away with the same methods as before. The tracks were primed and then painted with Mischer Models Rail Tie Brown. I simulated the worn areas of the track with Mr. Metal Colour Stainless. This was applied with a cotton bud in a technique a bit similar to dry brushing. The metal areas were then polished with a cotton bud to bring out the shine. I started weathering the tracks with Life Colour Liquid Pigment Frame Dirt. This will add some grimy shadows before I move on to further weathering. I then painted on some Wilder Aquiline Dry Earth. This was then blended in and pushed into the nooks and crannies with a slightly dampened brush. 
For some texture on the tracks, I stippled Wilder Aquiline Dry Earth mixed with Desert Sand and Dark Earth pigments. This was to give a slightly three-dimensional dirt effect. Next, I made some light dry earth effects with AK Dust and Dirt Deposits Brown Earth and Abtilung 502 Pigment Desert Sand. With a cotton bud, I removed any of the mix I didn't want from the contact areas on the tracks. I then added some wet effects to the tracks using AK Grease Wash and Humbral Dark Earth Pigment. The main body of the tank was coated with Misha Models Gloss Clear. This was to prepare the surface for some oil washes. I mixed up a wash of Artist Oil Paints, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre and White. This was applied as a pin wash over the whole model. When the oil washer dried, it was time for another coat of Winsor & Newton Artist Acrylic Matte Varnish. I then added some highlights to the model with a mix of Cobalt Blue, Black and White Artist Oils. I decided to add rain marks for the first time on one of my models. I used Life Color Liquid Pigment Rain Marks. This was then streaked vertically using their remover. I added a few streaks of AK Winter Streaking Grime for some tonal variation. This was then blended with AK Odorless Thinners. I added some more dusty dirty build up to the model. I used AK Dust and Dirt Deposits Brown Earth. This was mixed with Humbral Pigment Dark Earth and Abtiling Pigment Desert Sand for some variation. Mud terrifies me, but I decided to give it a go on this build. I mixed up some pigments and earth effects with some plaster of Paris. When the texture starts getting stodgy, you know it's time to go. Just remember, because of the plaster, it will dry a lot lighter than it looks. The mix was then applied quite liberally to the entire lower areas of the model. If you get any where you don't want it, you can dust it off when it's dry with a stiff brush. It's looking pretty dry, so I'm gonna get some wet effects on the mud 
I used AK grease for shafts and bearings mixed with burnt umber oil paints. This was basically speckled, brushed and flung on the model. It's far from perfect and I need more practice, but I think it came out okay. I added some oil and splattering to the engine deck with AK grease for shafts and bearings and ab tiling engine grease oil. This was streaked and speckled on until it looked suitably grimy. I painted the inside of the light housings with the cotton bud and Mr. Metal Colour stainless technique. When the paint had dried, I used the other side of the cotton bud to polish it. The lens was then glued in with Revel Contactor Clear. I painted the machine guns with Misha Models gunmetal. This takes a few coats to build up to opacity, but the finish is really nice. I gave the guns a wash of Artist Oil Cobalt Blue mixed with black. They were then ready to be mounted on the vehicle. And it's done. The Tacon Panzer 1A in 1 16th scale. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you really liked it, hit the like button. And if you really, really liked it, why not subscribe? I'm James, this has been LPJ Models, thanks for watching.